sure to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's January 31st here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yoon, and this is Arirang's new daily morning program, News Generation, where young people make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Choi Ji Hee. Good morning, Yoon and Niall. Good morning. <laughs> and Niall Song. Hi, everyone. Now I love your brooch. Oh, my brooch. This is actually made by a North Korean defector, and since we're talking about North Korea today, I thought it was a Appropriate. Oh. Yes, and for those of you who are curious, we are going to be talking on North Korea, and both are here to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. Now, every day we do make a news feed for the new generation, and we're looking at the top trending hashtags on social media over the past 24 hours. Now, here they are. The first hashtag is Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Cincinnati Bengals in the American Football Conference Championship game on Sunday. The Chiefs will face the Philadelphia Eagles in this year's Super Super Bowl, which is set for February 12th. The second hashtag is Hong Joong Gi. Great news for the Korean actor as he announced his marriage and wife's pregnancy through a letter to his fans. Song had confirmed that he's in a relationship back in December. Congratulations to him and his wife, Katie Lewis Saunders. Now, the last hashtag is heating bills. Unlike the recent drop in temperatures, we've seen a jump in heating bills here in Korea. That's also partly due to a rise in energy prices all over the world. Now, guys, I would like to talk about the last mm. hashtag mm. amongst ourselves. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely can relate to more expensive bills these days. And that's why I've been looking for ways to save up while mm. not trying to be too hot in the house. Right. And any interesting methods now you know of to keep yourself warm <laughs> while saving up money. You know, I actually grew up in Morocco. And when mm. I lived there, um, we tried to save on the bills as well. And it was quite cold during winter. So we would use hot water bottles. <sighs> so I actually still do that. And then I have a Snuggie. Which is snuggy. a blanket uh -huh. with arms in it. So oh, I'm just you. wearing my blanket all the time. Mm -hmm. But I've also heard that people are using tents indoors, mm -hmm. wearing their long paddings or goose downs indoors to stay warm. Wow, that's a lot of interesting methods for mm -hmm. sure. But Tihi, I hear experts mm -hmm. have different suggestions for us, right? Right, right. And these suggestions, I should listen to them too because <laughs> I was so surprised to look at my bills as right. well. Yes. So for an individual heating system, it's best that it, uh, you leave it to the leave mode or use the timer mode. And for the district heating system, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. They recommend you set your temperature one to two degrees lower than the desired temperature. And if you set it like five to six degrees higher than the desired temperature, uh, then the heating system will have to run for a longer period. Mm. And this will definitely lead to uh, higher expenses. So just uh, note that and use a humidifier as well to maintain mm. the inner mm. humidity level uh, so that the room temperature can reach the desired temperature more quickly. Uh -huh. And also uh, they recommend that the temperature is between 20 to 22 degrees Celsius during the winter season. Mm. And also you can wrap your windows with air cap. Ah, uh, I do too. that. Yes, yes. It's those are pretty easy ways right. you can uh, do actually to keep your bills lower. Mm -hmm. And not only in Korea but around the world, because mm -hmm. rising energy prices mm -hmm. have caused a hassle all over the world. Mm -hmm. And here in Korea, officials are well aware of the burden caused by the jump in basic living costs, and that's why they've been expanding subsidies and discounts for those most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you to for both of you for making our news feed today. And moving on, news. Jen discusses different topics each day, and today we have a video for you that t discusses what topic we'll be talking about. Hi everyone, I'm Yumi from Pyongyang. This is my first video. What kind of video would be good enough? To be honest, this is what I chose for today. This is Yumi. She's a rookie YouTuber living in North Korea. She uploaded her first video last August, showing what the reclusive city of Pyongyang looks like. Her videos show us a part of the world we can't easily see. But just like any other vlogger, she also shows her daily life, exercising and hanging out with her friends. Yumi's not alone. North Korea's new generation is communicating with the world on social media by speaking in English and casually showing quarantine vlogs or visits to water parks. Today, NewsGen looks at three questions. One, what are some distinctive traits of North Korean vloggers? 
Two, what's the intention behind North Korea's sudden use of social media? Is it a chance to look into the reclusive North Korean regime or another form of propaganda? Three, how are these videos different from reality in the North? All right, back in 2016, North Korea said it would block YouTube inside its country. Ironically, though, it's broadcasting to the outside world through this social media platform. In 2020, a young North Korean YouTuber named Una first caught the world's eye as she launched an English-speaking channel called Echo of Truth. She first described herself as an ordinary Korean girl, but later videos took on a more propaganda-like tone. Mm. Investigations later found that the channel was run by the North's state media, and after a while being silent, last year we've seen people from the North launch a few more channels. So I would like to ask you two, have you watched any of their content? Oh, yes, I did. I watched uh, You, Me, Space, ah. mm -hmm. yes, and 11-year-old Songa's YouTube channel mm -hmm. as well. Both of them launched last year. Right. And it was really interesting to see how Yumi's life uh, she showed on through her videos were very much similar to our lives. Mm. She was going to one of those sports complexes. Uh -huh. uh, she was receiving personal training. She yeah. was doing yoga. And she even visited this amusement park, which mm. I didn't know they have in North Korea, because we really don't know about this reclusive country mm. unless they tell us through these content. And also, uh, it was interesting to see how in Songa's uh, channel, she had one of the videos showing herself uh, when she was infected with COVID-19. <laughs> she had uh, military doctors mm -hmm. come visit her at her home mm -hmm. with some medicine to treat her which I thought was pretty interesting. No, I thought it was quite interesting, too, because yeah. what we see on the news is that North Korea never said it had any case of COVID-19. Right. Exactly. But it turns out they're doing quarantine vlogs, exactly. and you just get a look into the reality, and it's quite mm -hmm. different, right? Mm -hmm. What about you, Nell? Have you, have you ever watched one of their contents? I've actually watched both of them that uh -huh. you said, and I watched all their contents, and wow. it's so interesting. You know, Songa has a British accent. She does. Right. I thought that was so interesting. Right. It is, it is. And I did some research into these YouTube YouTubers, uh -huh. rookie, uh, YouTubers, and I found out that according to Representative Taeyong Ho uh, of the ruling People's Power Party, Songa is actually the daughter of uh -huh. a North Korean diplomat who served in the Embassy of London. Oh, I see. that's why she has that, that makes sense. Yes. Right, and Taeyong Ho would know that given that he is a former North Korean diplomat right. who served as a minister for mm. the North's Embassy in London, mm. where she would have worked with Songa's dad. That makes sense, and she <laughs> she has this high class accent. And right. if you look at her room, she's got nice things. She goes to water parks. It's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. But I've actually seen other shorts mm -hmm. that's just showing North Korea. And it says, you know, all about North Korea without any narration. So I was like, this is also interesting to watch, mm -hmm. you know, so you get to judge for yourself, see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And that brings me to a question for you now. Mm -hmm. As you judge for yourself mm -hmm. as an influencer and a content creator, mm -hmm. do you think there were any points that caught your attention for their production process? And are there mm -hmm. any similarities or differences to how you produce your content to theirs? Hmm. You know, there definitely was. Um, it's interesting to see Songa and Yumi's vlogs and contents because it doesn't seem like it's just made by them, whether it be their logos or their subtitles, editing and cameras. When Songa's speaking, it's not just her sitting in her room with a camera set up comfortably talking. Uh -huh. I can actually see her eyes glimpsing over to the cameraman ah. behind her. So I'm like, okay, so this is kind of a bigger production. When they go to water parks they do underwater shots so I was like okay but then in Korea too we have you know companies that actually help with content creation and so it's like MCNs in Korea helping youtubers out so mm -hmm. those are some similar similarities and you know differences that we can see mm. I see and Tiki it's not just YouTube though mm. North Korean content creators have expanded their influence on different platforms like That's TikTok right. and mm -hmm. through shorts videos but I'm wondering how this is even possible right right so now I'll mention that without the narration she even saw short video clips mm. right. uh, of North Korea right. and I believe uh, those were on TikTok yes, mm -hmm. that's right 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 and because these are run outside uh, the actual internet or intranet that's mm. used within North Korea mm -hmm. it's not possible for the North Korean res residents themselves to consume these video content. Oh, right. Yes, and um, experts say that it's impossible to even create these content as individuals. I see. So uh, there must be an intervention by mm. the regime. That's what experts say. And that is 
uh, probably why the public is saying uh, the government is using these media platforms to as means of propaganda mm -hmm. right. yes by the regime uh, and also experts say that because in the past uh, some channels and some videos that were uploaded by North Korea have been banned by some of these platforms mm -hmm. they're using these easy uh, methods social media platforms yeah. as a way of dodging the internal policy of some of the banned platforms that mm -hmm. too and young creators as a matter mm -hmm. of fact they're using young creators right. to dodge mm -hmm. all those policies and regardless of the platform and the date it's been uploaded now I feel as you briefly mentioned mm -hmm. it could be a tang of propaganda right yeah, I'm, one, I'm wondering, <laughs> did it get to you? Like, did your perception change towards North Korea? You know, I mean, I can't <laughs> say that it didn't because uh, as kids growing up in Korea and I guess everywhere else in the world, you don't know much about North Korea. There's not much to visualize. Right. And you just grow up thinking, oh, they're poor. And then you see these contents and they have all this infrastructures <laughs> like gyms and football fields and uh, like cinemas and things like that. So I was kind of shocked to see that, but it was also refreshing. And I think people have mixed feelings about it. Some people are cynical. Some people are like, well, this is cool. Let's see some more of it. But, you know, it's I think there's something compelling about right. seeing, you know, people reacting to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Who's going to win? It's kind of like us a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's a little relatable. Mm. Now, all right, let's hear from another another content creator like yourself, mm -hmm. Niall. He's a creator from the Netherlands who's actually visited North Korea himself. Joining us through Skype is a content creator who's actually been to North Korea himself. It's Bart Van Genuknen, who's currently in Seoul. Welcome, Bart. Good morning. You pronounce it really well, the name. <laughs> All right. Now, Bart, we heard you visited North Korea. Was there anything interesting you noticed about the younger generation living there? Uh, yeah, so I must uh, say that that was back in December 2018, 2019 was a New Year's Eve tour of six days together with my father. Mm. Um, and it is really difficult to obtain accurate information about the children in North Korea and in Pyongyang, even on a tour like that, because everything is carefully selected of the places where you're going to and there are always two guides on top of you. Mm -hmm. So what I can say is something about the children that I've seen. I noticed that uh, none of the children, even in Pyongyang, uh, had smartphones. Oh. Um, people of the older generations, they did have smartphones, but like you said earlier, uh, they can only access the intranet, not the internet. Hmm. Uh, and then the moment you leave Pyongyang and you go to cities like Sariwon and Gezong, uh, there almost none of the people had smartphones. Oh. So clearly, uh, the children in Pyongyang, they are better off. And they were also wearing branded clothes. I noticed Puma and Gucci. Wow. Whether it's real or not, I don't know. Um, and some of them did speak rather uh, well English, British English, mostly. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that based on what you just told us, now your what you just said earlier, mm -hmm. they must have a production team given right. that they didn't have too many <laughs> smartphones. Exactly. Now, do you two have any questions that you might want to ask Bart yourself? Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, Bart, what are some noticeable differences between the videos that are being uploaded by the North Korean content creators and the reality that you saw back in North Korea? Uh, well, so the, the North Korean content creators, uh, they appear to be run by a state-run company, so Pyongyang-based Sokwan mm. Media Corporation. Mm. Uh, and you already talked about her, Yumi Space, her channel. She almost has 6,000 subscribers the last time wow. I checked. Uh, through channels like that, they try to push official North Korean propaganda, and they do that in different languages too, like English, Chinese, uh, even Russian and Korean. Um, and I watched one of her videos in which she said that she wants to show the real Pyongyang, because foreigners in the last years, they uh, they still can't actually travel to Pyongyang themselves. Mm -hmm. So through her channel, she can show you, you know, what Pyongyang is like. Um, but it's interesting that they try to present themselves, you know, as these independent vloggers, mm -hmm. you know, making videos themselves, edit it themselves, and then upload themselves. But uh, yeah, it's, it's obvious that it's part of the of official propaganda. But uh, what is interesting about it is that th those videos do give a glimpse in how the middle class and the elite people or residents of Pyongyang live. Mm. Because uh, she brings us to restaurants, uh, she brings us to uh, a water park, amusement parks, and even during the World Cup, she asked mm. football players, you know, their opinion on who they favor more. Is it Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel <laughs> Messi? 
um, because they show they did actually show all the matches uh, on state TV um, even though it was a, a few weeks delayed in most cases because they try to to censorship you know the background the brands and everything they try to blur it out uh, but it tells us that they they do get some information of the right. outer world mm -hmm. and that they mm -hmm carefully can give their opinion uh, about this outside world. Um, but yeah, then again, it is illegal for North Korean residents to enter the internet and to upload their own video. So mm, obviously right. uh, Yumi's videos and also the other creators' videos, they are going through the propaganda machine first. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And Niall? Um, what are some expectations or even concerns that we have as North Korea is becoming more active online with their content creations? Uh, I personally don't really have any concerns. Mm -hmm. um, they try to create a positive image about North Korea. Um, but whether people will believe 100% of what they show to us, uh, I don't think so. I think the mm -hmm. biggest majority in the world will take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean it's not interesting to watch those videos because, mm -hmm. right. like I said earlier, they still show you a glimpse of how the middle class and elite live. So you can see uh, certain products that they are using, their phones, uh, the way they speak, uh, what kind of apartment do they live. So, um, yeah, you can watch it for different reasons. Entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, to see what products they use. Yeah, and unfortunately, some people they do believe what they show you, like everything, but not the majority. So uh, I'm not worried at all. Mm, all right. That was really nice to hear from you, given that you've been to North Korea yourself and you know the hacks on making good content. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Bart. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bart. All right. Now, Bye. if we bring the discussion back to the studio, any points of Bart's that fascinated you? I think it was fascinating how uh, the middle class and the elites mm. in mm. North Korea, uh, you can see that they're different just mm. by how which facilities they use, what they do in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. And he said some kids were wearing branded clothes, mm. right? So there are differences in the social order uh, in North Korea. And he said he doesn't have any concerns about these content right. mm -hmm. because people will know if this is scripted or mm -hmm. it's propaganda or not. But at least it's something interesting. We're at right. least um, having the glimpse into some of the lies from North, mm -hmm. in North Korea, which right. I think is pretty positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about you now? You know, I think like Chi just mentioned, mm. it's interesting to see North Korea. That's the first basis of everything. Mm. But, you know, I was actually shocked that they were wearing branded clothes as well. <laughs> and something about the British accent that they all had, they had right. British accents oh, yeah. when they spoke. I was like, oh, okay. Uh -huh. It's, I think it's really having to do with what type of diplomatic relationships mm. North Korea is having. Right. And given the fact that they are children uh -huh. of top officials, right? right? All right. Now, given that we are a live morning program, we always ask our viewers questions related to our discussion topic in advance. And we use this time to share with you what they had to say. If you take a look at the screen, we asked our viewers if they've seen any content produced by North Korean YouTubers. Commander Keen said, I had no idea about this until you wrote about it. But if they can give an honest insight into life in, the North, in North Korea, then there may be some value in their work. Renee Zenlock said, I've only ever seen content from defectors who escaped. Hearing their stories is incredibly powerful and eye-opening. Last but not least, Tiris Bell said, I have, but recently, that's only when she started watching, and she's actually very skeptical about any type of content coming from them, as I feel that it isn't actual content, but more like indirect propaganda. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you guys think about these comments? Well, I thought uh, what Commander Keen said, uh, they had no idea mm -hmm. about this before right. we mentioned it and mm -hmm. we brought it up. And I think it's fascinating that we at least get to see uh, what life is like mm -hmm. right. uh, in North Korea through these content. And if they're honest with it, I mm -hmm. think it's a good way of letting others outside North Korea know mm -hmm. what it's like to be living there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Tara's Bell also said she's very skeptical mm -hmm. of uh, these content mm -hmm. and it could even be indirect propaganda. Right. Right. which I also do mm -hmm. agree with. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What about you now? You know, it's so interesting that there are some people who have seen it, some people who haven't, and like for Commander Keen, I would recommend watching it, you know, watch it with a grain of salt, like we said, but mm -hmm. it's actually really fun to see what it's like. It's fun to explore North Korea through the lens of, you know, those people who are creating the content. Mm -hmm. All right, and every day we do upload questions related to our discussion topic for our viewers to answer. If you want to participate, please search Arirang News on YouTube and look into our community tab. The link 
link is right below. Now, we've already come to the final part of our discussion for today. And Tihi, as we heard from Bart, there seems to be a discrepancy in what we see from North Korean mm -hmm. content creators and the reality in the North somehow. And right. what are some things to keep in mind when we consume this type of content? Right, so although it's not clear uh, whether the content creators' mm -hmm. efforts are by the individual or are really sponsored by the state like before, mm -hmm. uh, we must not overlook the possibility at least that this, uh, this efforts by the North Korean YouTubers may be a part of the North Korean regime's effort to right. disseminate propaganda mm -hmm. through uh, easy means such as social media, which is trending these days. Mm -hmm. And also analysts say that uh, people like Yumi, they're from privileged families right. and many of the uh, facilities, the infrastructure that's introduced in her video, mm. uh, they're enjoyed by the highest in the social or political mm -hmm. order. So even among a Pyongyang residents and like 11 year old Songa, she's also from a very privileged family. Right. Uh, and also that is why we should still be quite critical mm -hmm. and skeptical, although it's quite interesting to mm -hmm. see these new content mm -hmm. and also not mistakenly perceive that the lives we see through some of these contents mm -hmm. represent everyone in North Korea. And I don't think it's only referring to North Korea, mm. any social media True, content. That's right. Don't believe what you see blatantly <laughs> on social media, right? Yeah. And Nell, why don't we end off on a brighter note? Mm -hmm. Anything you hope to see more of or could give tips to these <laughs> North Korean content creators as an influencer yourself? I mean, I would definitely love to see some more content, but there are some different topics that I would like for them to cover. Like, I want to see the countryside of North Korea, yeah. going to travel there mm. maybe reaction videos those are hot these days so you know showing them things and making the locals react to it that's mm. something I want to see and I think just the key thing about this content era is that people are being genuine and vulnerable right. and I want to see more of that whether it be through a live maybe like a live oh, thing that's coming oh, yeah, on live streaming. YouTube live streaming mm. Instagram live streaming I would like to see a little more of that and communication with their audience right, right. authenticity and diversification all right today we talked about North Korea's active presence online with their latest YouTube content and we'll be here every day from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Korea time bringing you the topics that young people are talking about. Special thanks to Chizhi Hee, my pleasure, and Niall Song, no problem. And thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.